The Trefoil Talks, celebrating 30 years of women of distinction. My name is Mary Pat King, and I'm the CEO of Girl Scouts of West Central Florida. Welcome to our Women of Distinction Trefoil Talks, a reimagining of our annual Women of Distinction event that honors its 30-year history. These live panel discussions will feature past Women of Distinction honorees and other notable women in our community. They'll be giving advice for young women who are making decisions about their future, continuing our goal of connecting today's women leaders with the future women leaders we are building at Girl Scouts. We are able to further our mission of building girls of courage, confidence, and character who make the world a better place because of your generosity, which is needed now more than ever. If you find this program to be valuable, please consider making a donation by visiting gswcf.org backslash WOD. And we hope you will. And now, the Women of Distinction Truck Oil Talks. Hello, and welcome to all those joining us for the second in a year-long series of Trifle Talks live broadcast. I'm Yvonne Fry, and I'm thrilled to be alongside my co-host for tonight's event. Annabelle, are you ready for a great discussion with um, our guests this evening? Yes, thank you, and hello, everyone. As part of this year-long live, se year live series, tonight's focus is on civics. We have a fantastic panel of women who have or are serving our community in some very significant roles. What a great time to hear from these leaders whose impact has been and continues to be so important for our community and state. I am very excited about this event and to be able to talk to these outstanding public servants about their journey and time in leadership. Me too, Annabelle. Before we introduce our panelists though, let's take a moment to hear from Lorna Taylor, CEO of Premier Eye Care and a 2013 Girl Scouts Woman of Distinction on why she supports Girl Scouts and this program through her sponsorship investment. I'm Lorna Taylor, the CEO of Premier Eye Care and Woman of Distinction Class of 2013. Premier Eye Care is so proud to be the premier sponsor for Girl Scouts of West Central Florida's Trayful Talks. Girl Scouting builds girls of courage, confidence, and character who make the world a better place. And as a Girl Scout, I know firsthand that the work this organization does is exceedingly important. At Premier Eye Care, we also work to create a safe place for women to excel and prosper. We ensure that women have equal pay to men and that they have equal access to positions at every level of the company, including the roles of directors, vice presidents, and officers. As business leaders, we believe in Girl Scouts and appreciate everything that Girl Scouts of West Central Florida is doing to develop and prepare our female leaders of the future. Thank you for joining us this evening, and we hope you enjoyed the Girl Scouts of West Central Florida Trayful Talk. We are so thankful for Lorna's leadership and support of women and girls in our community. She challenges us all to intentionally invest in programs, initiatives, and people to truly transform our world. I agree. She is certainly a woman that I admire. We appreciate her leadership and sponsorship to help support the programs and girls in Girl Scouts. Annabelle, that's what it's all about, the girls. In the time that I've spent with you, I've been inspired and motivated and that's why we're all involved in this year-long program, because we want to ensure that girls like you are truly able to reach their fullest potential. Girl Scouts really does just that. I've had experiences and learned new things and met people that have truly changed my life. Tonight's panel is another one of those opportunities that is extra special for me. Yes, we have some wonderful women to introduce to everyone as we get the conversation around civics underway. 
I do want to remind our viewers that Girl Scouts is a nonpartisan organization, and any views expressed tonight are the views of the individual panelists. We encourage girls to seek out what they think is important, do their research, and advocate accordingly. Tonight is a great opportunity for our girls to do just that. Let's begin by introducing our first panelist, the Honorable Alex Sink, who has served as the Chief Financial Officer of the State of Florida. She's also the founder of Roostless Florida. Welcome, Alex. We're so glad to see you tonight. Thank you. It's my pleasure to introduce the Honorable Sandy Merman, who has served in the Florida House as well as the Hillsborough Board of County Commissioners. Thank you, Ms. Merman, for joining us tonight. Thank you. Happy to be here. Welcome. And to round out the panel this evening, we're joined by Representative Fentress Driscoll, who is currently serving in the Florida House of Representatives, but also of note, she was the first African-American woman elected as the student body president of Harvard. Welcome, Frances. We're glad to see you as well. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I also want to mention Hillsborough County School Board member Melissa Snively was scheduled to join us this evening also, but one of her four children is graduating from high school tonight, and she needed to be there. She sends her regrets and her best regards to everyone. So hello and welcome to each of our panelists, and thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you, and hello, ladies. We have some great questions for our discussion tonight. But we want to start off the evening by asking each of you to share how and when you knew that you wanted to be involved in politics. My fellow Girl Scouts and I are hoping to learn more about what led you to run for office. Ms. Sink, please start off, uh, us off in the discussion. Thank you so much, Annabelle. Well, uh, I was interested in politics from a very early age, at the age of uh, eight years old, I remember my mother was involved in politics in our hometown and she would take me around with her to go to meetings and do poll working. And so I knew about politics, but I never thought about myself being somebody who was really necessarily going to run for office. In fact, I never wanted to run for office. Uh, but what I did want to do is help other people and especially women uh, running for office because when I became a young woman, there were very, very, very few women who were even elected to school board or county commission or city council. And so I was on a long journey to get to this point where we are today, where we can look around. I mean, we have a woman vice president of the United States and we have women governors and women senators and Congress people and here locally, house members, Senate members. So. Uh, I'm just so thrilled that there's so many women involved in politics now, and especially who stepped up to get elected. And for me, what happened to me was that I was later on, after a long career in banking, one of my friends, you might recognize the name Betty Castor. She's the former president of the University of South Florida. She actually called me up one day and said, Alex, you should run. You're a banker. You know finance. You should run for the office of chief financial officer of the state of Florida. I went, oh my gosh, what is that? But you know what happened was that I looked into it because I was open-minded and I looked into the job and I said, I really want that job. I can do that job. I can, I can implement policies and do things that will impact the lives of millions of Floridians. But I just had to run for office and that's a really scary thing. But I had groups of women who were around me who taught me how to do it. Uh, like the organization I started, Roostless Florida. And so there's lots of help around, and I'm sure that Sandy and Pinterest will uh, agree with that. So I'll just stop there and just say I was asked by somebody, a friend. I was open-minded to look into it, and I had the passion to do the job of looking after the state's finances. Thank you so much for sh sharing your story and the importance of women empowerment. Ms. Merman, would you please uh, discuss what led you to run for office? Oh, I'm happy to. And thank you so much, Annabelle. Um, you know, running for office was never an aspiration or a goal of mine. Um, it was um, actually something that I would never even consider. Um, but I had, like Alex, I had a career in the business world um, Work for Xerox. I was one of the first women that they hired to be in sales. And I had a very successful career there. But when I stopped after I had my daughter uh, working, 
I uh, got very involved with an organization called Children's Home and um, start just was so interested in policies and reasons why these abused children are living in the home without their parents. And just to learn about all the policies revolving around child abuse and child neglect. And um, like Alex, someone um, snatched me up who was in the office and said, you need to run for office. I was sitting on a health and human service board and I was being very passionate and pounding my fists on the table. We have to do better. We have to do better for our children. And um, I still, I said, no, I'm not going to run. But they sent uh, many people to come talk to me and convince me that I need to do it. But uh, she, actually, we just have so many, such a similar story. It was like, oh, my gosh, I've decided to run. Now what do I do? Um, you know, I have to win. And so you know, I'm surrounded by people that really uh, cared a lot um, I was passionate about running on a children's platform. Um, I had children first on all my signs, everything. And it just caught on with people. And I'm thinking even today, somebody needs to do that. So maybe one of you girls out there will be inspired. Thank you. Well, that's a very touching story and showing that your voice matters. Um, Ms. Driscoll, uh, what are your thoughts? So I first became interested in politics when I was in high school. I, before that, had no interest, thought I wanted to be an engineer. But then when I was in 11th grade, I took AP government and economics. And my teacher saw that I had a real passion for the subject matter. And he encouraged me to apply to youth and government programs. And so I did just that, whether it was YMCA Youth and Government or Model United Nations. But the program that truly changed my life was Florida Girl State. And so for our girls out there who are watching, uh, especially those of you who are still in high school um, and maybe going into your junior year, this is something that you can apply for. And it gives you the opportunity to learn about Florida government at every level, which was incredible to me, it's like city, county and state. And I became absolutely hooked. So it was a, at the age of 17 years old in a program that was just for girls which meant that we were able to validate one another, make space for one another, and frankly, charge. I got to meet the governor at the time and sit in his chair and tell everybody what to do, and it was the best thing ever. And I thought, okay, maybe someday I could do that. But life can sometimes take you down a winding road. So I wound up becoming a lawyer, getting very, and for a time, really just really sure, which was always very about it. But then, 16 election affirmation, regardless of what your political is, just felt like we were becoming more divided. And it seemed that women's voices were missing in the conversation. And I looked at the Florida House of Representatives, for example, which at the time was fewer, comprised of fewer than 25% women, even though women make up a little over half the population of Florida. So I decided to run for the House, and I'm very proud uh, to be there. I ran in 2018 and subsequently have been reelected. So the passion ignited when I was in high school, and then I finally did it later in life once I felt uh, motivated enough that I could go out there and help make a change and make a, a positive difference. Thank you so much for sharing. That's very empowering that your passion drew, drew, drove you to what you do on a daily basis. Thank you. Yeah, and it's so exciting to hear how others have sewn into you and the responsibility that you bear now to empower others. So I, I love that all the way through. Let's dig in a little further right now on your journey as women in leadership. We've touched on this. Politics, like many other fields, has been and continues to be dominated by men at many levels. Uh, let's explore how important it is for women to be involved and engaged in the process and how hard is that at times. Um, Fentress, as a woman of color, the challenges are compounded for you, but you're, you're a trailblazer in many roles. Um, congratulations on recently being named as the first black woman to lead the House um, Democratic Caucus in Florida. Tell us how difficult and yet how important it is for women of color to be engaged in the process, please. Well, thank you for that note of congratulations, Yvonne. I appreciate it. But it's really interesting. As a woman of color, I think oftentimes you feel, I feel, uh, pressure to make sure that I'm performing well and that I'm, you know, I'm, that I'm doing my best and that I'm representing so well. And I think Part of that pressure comes from the fact when you look around and you don't see others who look like you at the top. 
you feel like you have to carry that weight, you have to be that representative. And whether that's the right way to look at it or not, that tends to be what happens. And so to me, yes, it's absolutely important to have women of color engaged in the process, because that's how we have more diversity around the table. Like we need more women of color to have their voices represented at the, the, the table. And by the table, I just mean wherever the seat of power is, where, wherever the leadership is, whether that's in a, in a company or a corporation, or whether it's at the upper echelons of government. And in that way, we can make sure that more voices, more voices are included. And it's not just one person trying to carry that perspective but that we're really capturing the voices um, of, of diversity in our community, which frankly make our community so great. Thank you, very well stated. Sandy, you've served at the state and county level. What would you say to women about how and why they should be engaged in the political process, why it matters so much? Well, um, it now, especially now, it's so important for women to be involved in the political process. Um, we are, Four out of 10 businesses are now owned by women. Um, we have uh, women making most of the purchasing decisions in the household, like 62%. I mean, there's just so many reasons. But to be involved in politics, I think is this is a crucial moment for women um, because leadership and leaders, women as leaders, are needed now more than ever. Um, we, uh, they, we need good leaders to represent our neighborhoods and our city councils, our county commissions, our state government, our school boards, um, because of what I mentioned before about children. We need to care about their health, their welfare, and their education now more than ever, because they're going to be the future generation. If you look at our world and you look at our our uh, United States of America and all the issues we're facing, I think this is, is critical. And what is required more of our leaders and why women are so important um, is because we know we have the ability to build a consensus and direct diverse groups towards a common solution. That is one thing that I think women possess um, that we do better. Um, I'll just say that. Um, because we are um, always at the forefront and we're always making decisions, but making decisions that affect, uh, that are for our communities and any organization um, that can affect others in positive ways is, is just really important now more than ever. Thank you. There certainly are so many different issues. Um, and, and as you said, that I think there's a special in a different way that women um, lead that affects change and so on. So thank you for touching on that. Alex, you've broken many glass ceilings in your um, whole career. You started out in banking and that's helped shape your political career as you shared in some powerful ways. How hard was it to start as a woman in banking when you did and how did that further prepare you for your path in politics? I think some of our younger viewers may not even understand what the chief financial officer of the state of Florida does. So can you just, kind of track that through to help them understand how the succession goes with that and where you landed? Sure. Well, I did start my career in banking, which uh, was, was at the time and still is uh, to a great extent, a very male dominated field for whatever reason. Um, but the thing that the reason I loved being a banker is because every day I woke up knowing, knowing that I was going to make lending decisions for uh, that would in, impact families, uh, enable them to buy their first home or send their children to college uh, or buy, you put a swimming pool in their backyard or go on a family vacation and also making lending decisions for businesses so they could grow and so they could hire more and more people. So that was a part of my passion for eventually getting into public services knowing that when, when you're a public official, uh, you're, make, you're taking votes, you're learning about issues and you're making votes. And you're also, uh, as a woman in particular, we see things through a different lens. Let's just face it. We're, we're the mothers. Uh, we tend to be the caretakers. We're worried about our children. We're worried about our children's safety or the health of our children. 
and the education of our children. And that's not to say that the dads are not out there. I have a son who's a wonderful father, but it's just in the nature of women to be a little bit more broad minded and have a greater perspective. And that's why when we're sitting there taking votes, we're able to see the bigger picture of how these policy decisions impact not only individuals, but in our families. And to go back to working in a man's world, like I started my career, uh, the first thing I wanted to do was understand how men think. And it was really important for me to understand somebody else's perspective. Uh, and then it was important, I thought, for me to be able in the, in the right format and, and in a polite but firm way to be able to speak up and say, hey, wait a minute, not everybody thinks this way. Or if you implement that policy or make that decision, this is the impact it will have on many other people. And I relate so much to what my friend Sandy Merman said about her advocacy for children's issues. Um, it's just having that woman's perspective is so critical. And that's why I won't be satisfied until 50% of our office holders are women. Well, you're definitely doing the work to help achieve that. And we appreciate all of your leadership and the perspective on why it's so important and, and really the impact that women can have that's, that's very unique. So thank you all for your reflections on that. Yes, it's important for a girl's leadership and engagement and advocacy. And you ladies have definitely expressed that. Yes, yes. So stress is a big part of life, but politics seem to bring a different level of pressure. Please tell us how you have handled the stress of campaigning and governing, especially when things get really personal in the attacks and tactics. Have you ever just wanted to quit? Or what is it that keeps you engaged in the process as a leader? Ms. Merman, would you please start off? Oh, gosh. OK. Um, this, we could talk about this for probably an hour. Um, but you know, criticism comes with politics. Um, you can't please everybody, but what you can do is sit down with people and talk with them. And again, said before, building that consensus to come to a common solu to a solution that they are going to be happy with. Maybe not totally happy, um, but you need to face it. Don't shy away from criticism. And it's so hard to do that, but it will over time build that thick skin you need to really um, succeed and be successful in making policy and going forward. Um, but I, um, I always consider the source too and uh, realize that criticism doesn't last forever. Uh, usually it's 24 hours, um, but you've got to uh, really just be, be a great person, just look people in the eye and be straightforward with them, but listen listen to what they have to say and say, you're going to work very, very hard to try and make sure that their voice is heard. Thank you. That, that's definitely encouraging that we need to listen, not to ourselves and how we feel. Exactly. Ms. Sink, what, what engaged you in the process as a leader? Well, um, Sometimes people are intimidated by the idea of campaigning and part of campaigning is also raising money because it takes a great amount of money to be able to get your message out. And you have to go out and ask your friends and your family and even strangers, people that you don't know to believe in what you're trying to accomplish. And for me, I get my energy from people. So campaigning is absolutely fun. And it's, it's, uh, it's nonstop and you do it a lot, but what do you do in campaigning? It's what Sandy said. You're able to listen to other people's problems. And I was a math major in college and have loved numbers and have loved problem solving my whole life. And all I wanna do is hear somebody else's problems or issues and say, what can I do to help solve that problem? So that, that rewarding part of it for me just overcomes uh, a lot of the not so fun aspects of it. And I've, I've been in, I was in three campaigns and I knew every time whether I was going, whether I would win or lose, the most important thing for me personally 
was to be able to wake up the day after the election, look myself in the mirror and feel that and know that I had maintained my character and integrity. Because for me personally, character and integrity are the most important things in life. That's what carries you through. And that's what Girl Scouts learn. Girl Scouts learn to be women of character and integrity and to live lives of purpose and meaning. So win or lose, it's worth the effort because you know that you're, you're there for good intentions and good purposes, and you're there to solve, uh, help solve other people's problems and make their lives just a little bit better. Amen. Mm -hmm. I did not know that about campaigning, so thank you for giving me some insight of that and also expressing your need that being there for others. Ms. Driscoll, what are your thoughts? Well, so I'm, I'm learning, listening to, uh, to Sandy and to Alex. These are, are very good thoughts. I'll tell you, you know, the stress of campaigning and governing, especially when things get personal, I would encourage for all the girls and women and actually anybody who's out there watching and listening, one of the things I've had to realize is that you have to know yourself. You have to know yourself really well and have a good solid core of self-love for, for yourself because people that you don't even know will come out and attack you. People who don't even know your character, who don't know your intentions, but you have to be able to, to go into the place within yourself where you are just your most authentic and be at peace with that. And I think Alex said it really well when she talked about having character and integrity. You know, for me, it's, it's this journey really has been about learning myself so that I can be comfortable and, and not really ride the waves of the highs and lows. You know, it's the funny thing about the public. The public can, can be singing your praises one day and they can be trying to tear you down the next. That's why it's important for you to know yourself. And I would say that translates, you know, whether you're in politics or whether you're in business or, or whatever you're doing in life, there are going to come times where you're going to get constructive criticism. And that's the type of criticism that you can learn from and it can help you grow. And there are other times where people are just going to hate on you for whatever reason. You're too tall. You're too short. You're a girl, not a boy, like whatever. And I think at those times you need to be able to transcend the noise and really get quiet with yourself. Um, for me, I've had to also become very intentional about understanding my limits, understanding my limits, understanding when it is that I need to take rest, making sure that my own cup is, is full so that I can be my best self and give my best to the community because that's what the people deserve. You know, they have elected me to give them my best. And so I try to always make sure that I can perform optimally. And that means at times as a leader, you have to make sure that you're getting rest and taking care of yourself. Um, there was another part of that question, which was about quitting, I think. Like, have you ever wanted to quit? And I will tell you, uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm human. We're all human. There are times where you, where you feel like you may want to quit. But for me, there's a difference between quitting and disengaging. So, you know, quitting to me is when you are abandoning your, your purpose and you're just walking away. That for me has not been an option. Um, but disengaging, yes, there may be times where you need to turn off social media, you need to tune out the noise, and you need to stay focused on the work that you have to do so that you make sure, uh, make sure that you are delivering, um, you know, what you're supposed to and delivering on your promises. Great. Thank you so much for sharing that. Definitely self-importance is key when doing that because you have to put yourself first sometimes, and that might be difficult. Yeah, and thank you, ladies, for all being so vulnerable in that. Um, it's not always easy, and knowing yourself and being grounded is certainly essential in this, um, and, and sleeping well at night, knowing who you are, for sure. So thank you all for that. I want to switch gears um, for a few minutes, and let's, let's talk about policy. Um, what would you each consider the most important issues facing our community today, especially to us as women? And if you would, in activating our girls, would you please share a way that our viewers can engage to help make an impact on these issues? Alex, can we start with you? Sure. Well, the, the policy or the issue that's most in uh, my mind right now is the uh, impacts of the pandemic, uh, particularly on women. Uh, the statistics are showing that, <coughs> excuse me, that uh, more women uh, have been impacted by the loss of work. Uh, women as, let me have a sip of water here. <coughs> that 
women, even professional women have, uh, some, some have decided to drop out and spend more time with their families and said their careers aren't progressing. And then also women at the low, at, at, in the lower paying jobs have been incredibly impacted. So I'm really concerned about losing all this progress that women have made in the workplace uh, in terms of income producing uh, ability and progressing and being more professional and having higher level jobs that uh, we've had to backslide in the last 18 months. So it's, it's my great hope that uh, people can be more supportive and that women will once again re-enter the workplace and even educational, educational opportunities for young women in college and coming out of college and finding the kinds of jobs they like. So we, we've been through a very trying time, I think, when it, when it comes uh, to women. So that's probably uh, one of my biggest issues right now, in addition to the fact that I'm very, very concerned, and I know we're working on this uh, at United Way Suncoast, uh, and I know Girl Scouts is working on this idea, too, of what, what is the lost education that this year of our children having to be online and missing school and not having social interaction. And we, we just don't know yet what all the implications are socially and educationally for our children. So uh, that lost year, I think, is something that uh, our social services uh, are going to need to address and deal with our community. Are there any, all of those are, are very concerning issues right now. Are there any groups or other channels that you would encourage folks to support or to be a part of to help address some of those things? We want to give some concrete um, avenues if you would. Well, I'm, I'm, I, I hope, I hope the Mary Pat or somebody will come in and, and tell a little bit because I am absolutely certain that the Girl Scouts as an organization is thinking really hard about these issues. Um, and, and also think very carefully, uh, our, the United Way Suncoast just received a $20 million gift from um, Mackenzie Scott, a national leader. And uh, I'm a board member there and we're in the process right now of addressing how that $20 million can be invested back into our community. Uh, to, to make up some of these gaps. So it, it's kind of stay tuned and check out the websites of these organizations. And uh, I, I do want to add on about ways to get involved, Yvonne and Annabelle, because um, I think there's several ways. You don't have to just run for office to make a difference. Um, you can, uh, particularly to our young women, get involved in a campaign. I mean, Ventress is going to be running for re-election at some point in time and would love to have volunteers. It is so interesting and informative to uh, learn how campaigns are run all the way from putting signs in yards to making phone calls to working on policy issues for candidates. And Yvonne, you stepped up and ran for office. And so I'd love to hear you say a few words about this, but get involved in campaigns. Uh, volunteer to serve on boards and commissions, and uh, particularly for our young uh, women, uh, assume leadership positions like Fentress did when she was in high school and seek out opportunities to get experience in student government. And just leadership requires practice. So seek out opportunities and practice and practice and um, or get involved if you want to be political either Democratic Party or Republican Party, there are plenty of opportunities to learn how to volunteer and be involved in campaigns. And trust me, the candidates will really appreciate it. Absolutely, thank you. Those are all great concrete ways. And I think what we're trying to make sure is that, that there are some specific things and you, you mm -hmm. offered some great options for our young, our young and uh, people of all ages to realize that they can impact it at different stages. Ventress, um, what do you have an issue or issues that you'd like to share with us and how we can engage around that right now, especially affecting women? Yes, absolutely. So I wanted to lift up a, maybe a policy that our girls listening haven't heard of, but it's the Equal Rights Amendment. And I didn't learn about this until college, but the Equal Rights Amendment was first introduced in Congress in 1923. 
That's two years after women gained the right to vote for the 19th Amendment. And we all are familiar with the 19th Amendment. But what people are less familiar with is the Equal Rights Amendment, also known as the ERA, which very simply says, that equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or any state on account of sex. It's a very simple and straightforward uh, law, but basically to put it in even plainer speak, you can't discriminate against women. <laughs> so what's amazing to me uh, in American history is that women fought so hard to get the right to vote in 1921. And then women said, you know what? We would love it if we were not discriminated against also. And America said, not so fast, like, hold on. You just got the right to vote. You're asking for way too much. And so this has been a fight for nearly a hundred years to have this very simple, but very elegantly worded amendment added to the constitution to make sure that women, the, the protection of women is enshrined in the constitution. It's amazing to me but women are not protected under the plain text of the Constitution. You have court cases that have interpreted that the equal uh, protection clause and some other clauses may apply to women. But there's nothing actually in the Constitution that protects women from discrimination. And so during my first term as a lawmaker, I was honored to carry a resolution in the Florida legislature that would uh, push Florida to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment because it is a constitutional amendment it takes three quarters of the states to approve it. And we were pushing to have Florida become one of those states. Unfortunately, it still hasn't passed in Florida. It was first introduced in 19, the 1970s in Florida by uh, the Honorable Gwen S. Cherry, who was the first black woman legislator ever elected in Florida. And it's been a fight uh, ever since. So I would love for the next generation of girls to know about the ERA, to go and do their own research and try to get involved one way that you can do that is visit eraratifyfl.com. That's eraratifyfl.com. This is a website that was started by Athena Society, which is a Tampa-based organization that promotes women in every facet of life, um, in which, of which I'm honored. I think actually all the women panelists tonight are members of Athena Society. Um, and one of the things that we do is promote the ERA, the passage of the ERA. And Yvonne, too, one of our hosts, too, like, look at this. It's like yeah. all Athena sisters, uh, which is a really beautiful thing. Um, but if you visit that website, you can actually learn more about the ERA. And then there are concrete action steps that you can take to get involved, including looking up your lawmaker and contacting them, reaching out to your city or county commission and asking them to pass a resolution in favor of the ERA, looking for ways to speak about the topic. So that's a really great way to get involved. I also just wanted to highlight and spotlight the League of Women Voters, which is another wonderful organization for women doing so much great work. They're a nonprofit, they're partisan, and they do a great deal to advocate um, and educate voters so that voters can advocate for themselves, I guess I should say. So that's another way to get involved. And then last, I'll put in a plug for Ruthless Florida, which is Alex's organization, the organization she started. If you visit Ruthless website, there's a way that you can get involved and become a member. And again, even if you don't want to run for office, but you want to support women candidates, that's another great way to get involved. Thank you. Lots of concrete things, a lot of educational pieces in there. And we do encourage our girls to go and do research and find out more about the topics that we're sharing tonight. Sandy, um, issues. Children is, I mean, you have carried that banner for so long. I don't know if you're going to go in that direction or a different direction, but I wouldn't be surprised if you talked about kids right now. <laughs> well, um, and actually, Alex got the ball rolling in the conversation. And I do want to tell all the girls out there, don't be afraid to get out there and make a difference. Um, look at successful women. Uh, learn from them. Vol ask them if you can volunteer to help them, whether it's politics or in business or what, somebody's small business. Just running a small business as a woman right now is a huge achievement for anybody. But if you, as you are helping other women achieve their goals, you will learn how to achieve yours. And I think that's always something I like to tell young girls uh, especially Girl Scouts, because you're so leadership driven. But issues are so important to me, especially involving children. Alex mentioned the pandemic. Uh, I'm very worried about our children who uh, were not able to have a successful year 
um, in our schools or if they did not go to school um, one way or the other. Um, I'm worried about we're still just removing too many children from their homes uh, that are victims of child abuse and neglect, uh, especially with the pandemic, people will be home. Uh, there's always a concern out there that more children were being abused or possibly even trafficked. Human trafficking is a huge issue, um, but also health care. People that lost their jobs. They probably lost health care for their family, for their children. Um, and there's just so many ways, uh, you know, to learn about those issues, to get involved with them. And I, I really think especially uh, get to know your public officials because they'll help you find a committee, a group, um, or if you're passionate about something, I even say sea turtles or whatever it is, um, just you can go online now, find out about all the different groups. You can volunteer, learn about the issues. And I just think it's important to get that involvement. But don't be afraid to go out there and make a difference because your involvement will be critical to the rest of your life. And, and some of the moves and actions that you take for your career going forward. Thank you. I think that all of you have stressed that beginning right now, today, there are a lot of issues. Find your passion, and there's ways to be involved and make an impact. And Absolutely. it's not about that you have to be in office or run for office necessarily, because that's not certainly for everybody. But thank you for that challenge to all of our viewers tonight. I believe as Girl Scouts, we make a change every single day. So thank you for emphasizing that. We have one last question to close us out for tonight. On behalf of all the young women who are tuning in, what advice would you give your younger self that we could all learn from. Ms. Driscoll, would you please go first? Thank you, Annabelle. And you have been such a wonderful co-host tonight. We're so proud of you and congratulations on your recent graduation from high school. We can't wait to see all the great things that you will do. And one of the things that I would tell my younger self is that you don't have to wait for anyone's permission to go after the things that you wanna do in life. Take the bull by the horns and go for it actually learned this quote from my youngest sister who said once she said to me once she said make them tell you no and I love that it's like I think as women sometimes we can be very hesitant very tentative not always as confident in our abilities you know there's that one statistic that goes around that there could be a job posting and let's say it has 10 criteria that you're supposed to have you know a woman could have more than half of them let's say she has six or seven and the woman might say well I don't have all 10 maybe I won't apply but a guy might have too. And he says, hey, you know, what's the worst that can happen? And he'll apply. I think we have to do uh, as women, making sure that we do a better job of putting ourselves out there, grabbing the bull by the horns. And I would tell my younger self, you don't have to wait for anybody's permission. Make them tell you no. Go for the things that you want to do. Dream big. Uh, and, you know, don't be afraid of failure. Just go out there and go for what you want. And, and you have to at least try. Thank you so much for the shout out. I'm extremely blessed to be able to come here tonight and hear from you wonderful ladies and especially um, hear your words of wisdom. Uh, Ms. Merman, what would you tell your younger self? Well, uh, you're right. Confidence is always the key, especially when you're younger. But I would tell my younger self to that you should have been bolder and ask for stronger assignments, uh, should be strong. Um, stand up for what you believe in. Um, don't be ignored. Don't be talked over. Be heard. Hold on to your values. Um, it's so important not to lose your voice um, after, you, after you leave the room and you learn about issues. Um, and always forget to ask, uh, don't forget to ask questions. That's just so important. Um, and it will help you build your life going forward. Um, I think it's, uh, you know, for me, don't be on the short list. Be a list maker. Be persistent. Make some effort. And I always tell women, keep a journal. Write down everything you do every day that helps you achieve your goals. Because you can go back and reread it. And it's going to help to build that strength and confidence 
that you have in yourself. And just be grateful for everything that you've been given. And believe me, you're going to be very, very successful. And I just wish you all the best of luck. And Annabelle, you're going to do great in college. Great. Thank you so much. Girl Scouts definitely values the your voice and that girl's voice matters. So I appreciate you putting emphasis on that too. Um, Miss Sink, last but not least, would you share your perspective? Well, I think I think uh, it's in line with what Pinterest and Sandy said is to be aspirational, to uh, you know, to really reach for the stars. And I just this question has made me think back upon, you know, my younger self. I didn't have any role models. I wasn't able to say, oh, I could be governor one day, or I could be a senator, or I could be the CEO of a bank one day. And so that's that's a benefit that all the all the young women listening tonight do have is uh, I know that today uh, Forbes magazine uh, rolled out their issue that I can't wait to buy called 50 over 50, which is 50 women over the age of 50 who've done amazing, wonderful things. And they had 10,000 they had 10,000 nominations. So uh, my advice is to, to understand that you can be and do anything, but the important thing is to know who you are and what your strengths are and, and just play to your strengths and your passions and, and keep on the path and recognize that at this point, somebody else, some other woman has probably done something that you would aspire to do. That's pretty powerful. I think your younger self would be very proud of everything you have accomplished. So <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. And she thank should have you, been Anna governor. Bell. You should have been governor. <laughs> yes. Thank you very again. True. Yes, each of you, your your wisdom, your candor. We just really appreciate the time that you've spent with us tonight. And um, I, I'm sure we, we were making notes on a lot of that to reference back. And there are so many nuggets, um, so much truth, so much power in your words. So thank you again for spending the time with us and all that it means. And especially the support for Girl Scouts. That's woven through all of this. And what we're doing and investing in our, in our young women um, is essential right now. They're at a perilous time. This has been quite a difficult, challenging time, as we've talked about. And that's what this is all about. So thank you so much for that. That's what the heart of, of what we're doing here tonight, for sure. Yes, thank you so much, ladies, for coming on and speaking. You have are definitely building girls with courage, confidence, and character. To all my fellow Girl Scouts, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I hope you all enjoyed this experience as much as I did. If you're interested in staying involved with the Truthful Talks, you can actually meet requirements towards earning badges by tuning into these events. For more information, check out the Girl Scouts website at gswcf.org slash WOD. Thank you. I'm hoping for a, a badge at some point in this process. I'm really looking forward to that. Annabelle, it's certainly been an honor to co-host with you tonight. You're a pro. I see an awesome future in broadcasting or politics or whatever you're in. You're interested in marketing, though. Yes. But what the sky's the limit on what you want to do. Congratulations and, and love being beside you this evening. Thank you. I learned a lot and I am inspired to be more involved as you don't have to be in politics or elected in office to make an impact on policy and the issues that affect us all. We can start now. Yes, indeed. Annabelle, you'll be interviewing Mary Pat King, the CEO of Girl Scouts. Um, an interview is going to be released in July. I'm excited to watch this to learn more about Mary Pat and her vision for serving girls in our community. And I hear we get to learn more about you, too. I do know you're going to do a great job with this interview. I'm really excited. So everybody tune in in July to watch that. Yes, I'm excited to get to talk with her and share more of the work of Girl Scouts. I'm so passionate about what Girl Scouts means to me and how it has impacted my life. Thank you. We also invite everyone to the next live Trefoil Talk on August 4th at 7.30. Our focus is on finance. We're going to have some of our community's uh, leaders in that industry who are going to bring some exciting conversation about numbers, both how to be successful in the finance industry and some also talk about investments and how to be successful and, and preserve your income regardless of the career path that you choose. Thank you again for joining us. We have one more message from Laura Webb president of the Board of Directors for Girl Scouts of West Central Florida to close us out for tonight. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Hello.
I'm Laura Webb, President of Girl Scouts of West Central Florida's Board of Directors. Thank you for joining us for our Women of Distinction Trefoil Talk. I hope you found it insightful. I want to give a special thanks to our sponsors, including Fried Egg Productions and Premier Eye Care for their generous support of this project, as well as so many others. And thank you to everyone watching for your belief in girl possibilities through your support and participation with Girl Scouts of West Central Florida. We provide life-changing opportunities for thousands of girls and young women in our community, but we couldn't do it without you. You can still go to gswcf.org backslash WOD to make a contribution. Thank you again. We hope to see you at our next Trefoil Talk and in person at our 30th anniversary event on March 18th, 2022.